Good morning, Bismarck Mandan. Dave Floor here on the Dakota Housing Network with my co-host... Greg Larson. And Jim Hello. Walsh on the board, as always. Our keeping us engineer. under, Keeping us in line. Mm. And it's, he's declared it to be Paul McCartney Day today. That's right, because okay. uh, Paul's going on tour. He's going to be in Minneapolis and Sioux City in about two weeks. Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls, Sioux I'm Sioux sorry. Falls. Where right. is Sioux You're City right. compared to Sioux, Sioux Falls? Sioux City is right yeah. across the river from Sioux. Uh, Nebraska, Omaha. Yeah, okay. Ah, okay. Okay. That, that's easy to get confused. Yeah, Sioux, Sioux Falls City, Sioux is Falls. what I was thinking yeah. of. So, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Interest rates. Um, I didn't print out the Freddie Mac thing because, you know what? Nothing changed. No, they dipped. Uh, no, not but by not the Freddie much. Mac survey. Oh, the Freddie Mac. Yeah. Like, they're the same. Yeah. They're the same. Um, so it's, it's lock them if you got them. Yep. Day again. So, uh, But our friend uh, Barry Abib from the MBS Highway is daily update today. He is carefully floating. So that means rates could go down. Or but be ready in case they go up. You may want to lock, depending upon what happens. Uh, this morning, stocks were slightly higher. They're helped by oil prices. Oh, we like to hear that. Yes. Helped by oil prices. And oil prices have been going up. Yep. We are into uh, the 40s. The crude is up above $40 yep. and pretty strong. It actually... Not that I'm an expert on this, but, you know, we dipped way down. We were down to 30, I think even 20. At, we bounced right at right uh, at high that 20s, 30, but, yeah. yeah. And it came back up, and it's kind of been, you know, it goes up, and it comes down a little bit, but then it goes up higher, and then it comes down a little bit, and then it goes higher, and then it comes down a little bit. And we cracked the 40, now I think like last week, and it didn't, it hasn't really come down for a whole day below 40. <laughs> for a whole day. <laughs> but the the yeah. trend is to be up. Yep. And it, you know you're going to have fluc- daily fluctuations, but the trend is going up. And they, I just saw something yesterday that they said the oil prices they expect to start rebounding. You know how high is anybody's guess? But I think a lot of people are expecting 50s. Yeah. Because slowly the production is slowing down, and actually the the production slowdowns in this country have may have had an effect worldwide and that is going to be start raising prices and they said actually some of these other countries can't afford to produce more yeah that's true. so the glut of oil is is going down because of that so the things might we could have a nice steady increase in north dakota maybe we'll if we see the rig count increase by a couple this yeah. over the summer that might be a real good sign for for North Dakota so yeah the latest I heard is that our production which is the income producing side is right. off yeah um, but not much we're still over a million dollar our million yeah. barrels a day yeah we don't expect to go below that so yeah. that steady production is there yeah. uh, what we're feeling is the decline in oil prices which affects sales taxes mm-hmm. that's the big and the taxes and fees paid by the Exploration yeah. side of it, yeah. the development side. So. Well, when you look, you know, the sales tax numbers were down significantly yes. and have been all trending that way. But when you when you go back and look before everything started going crazy, yeah. we're still way above where we were at, let's say, like 2008. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah. Even though we're yeah. down huge amount from the peak, yeah. we're still way above where we were. And our tax commissioner's report said the, the of sales taxes said that the uh, – uh, 2015 sales tax collection was down, but in the major metro areas, it was basically flat. Yeah. Same as the year before. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, Western North Dakota is where the sales tax. Yeah. But well, Wilson was still number two. Yes. They were ahead of Bismarck. Yeah. And so go go <laughs> with about what half the population at least. Uh less than I think. Less than half yeah. the population. So. The, that's still pretty strong up there. Yeah, it's still a healthy market. Um, so anyway, Barry uh, talks about the you know, CPI, uh, the core inflation rate, uh, is still above the Fed's 2% target. Um, so that would lend a little thing that uh, the Fed might consider raising rates come June, maybe. Um, jobless claims, initial jobs claims, are people filing for unemployment benefits for the first time. We reported 253,000 for the week ending uh, this week, and that was 13,000 lower than last week's figure. Uh, and that was better than expectations, um, and it was actually the strongest figure since 1973. Wow! Um, the outside of the oil and gas and manufacturing sectors, the firing uh, is pretty muted. It's not really happening. Um, so you know, from that aspect. 
you know, it's a good report, but there's still that drop in, you know, the energy sector and the manufacturing sector as far as number of jobs is still a, still an issue. Um, later today, there's going to be a 30-year bond auction. That's always can move the markets as far as affecting interest rates. Uh, yesterday, they had a 10-year Treasury note auction, which was graded an A by CNBC's Rick Santelli. I don't know who he is, but... Not, Apparently he's a yeah. he's a he must be an he expert. Gra- he he's grades quoted. he grades treasury auctions. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, but anyway, that was a strong, obviously a strong uh, bid, and that that tends and the reason for that was because it, in all the other countries with the government bonds and stuff, they're all paying zero or negative interest rates. So the United States treasury bonds are once again very attractive to the uh, everybody in the world, yeah. which will drive. Yields up, prices down, meaning yeah, probably mortgage rates aren't going to get any higher in the near term. So, so I would say lock them. Yep. <sighs> All right. So, uh, Greg, what are you, you got anything today? What are, what are we thinking? What we're going to talk about today? Well, we got a quarterly report out of the National Association of Realtors, um, which is pretty interesting. It's it's uh, we we've talked on the show about. They use the indicator of pending home sales. What homes are homes that have a contract on them that haven't closed? Okay. And they use that because it's it's a, a certainty, um, a statistical certainty that they can compare, you know, month to month, yeah. quarter to quarter. Okay. So for the first quarter of 2016, uh, we are having a um, contract signings rise of uh, 3.5% to 100. Get this, this is a, a, in a month. One hundred nine million dollars. Okay. Um, so it's uh, it's the best in seven months, and we're now seven percent above February two thousand fifteen. The index has now increased over year year to year for eighteen consecutive months. So we are having a national rebound in uh, home prices, pretty home good sales, home sales, yeah. home sales. That's not dollars. That's one hundred nine million homes. Yeah. Well, and uh, there's a little volatility in the winter and all that rattling you hear does me flipping a page. He says that this is a softening. And what he's saying is it's still a good report, but the inclination to be buying is softening. So he said, uh, mm. based on that, he predicts that, 19, that 2016 is going to be a increasing year. We will still have a recovery. Um, his two concerns are that... Um, the price index nationally is outpacing the income increases. Yes. And so that's going to slow first time home buyers, which will eventually slow everything. He still sees it to be a positive year, but not as positive as 2015. So not overall. gangbusters, but not, not bad. gangbusters, moving in the right direction. We like slow and steady, though. Yep, we do. That's good. And we've talked about it. As a matter of fact, we talked about it quite a bit last, uh, yeah, uh, last week. Was it. Uh, uh, we need to keep these entry-level homes, first-time home yeah, buyers. Yeah. They're important, and we're kind of running out of them. And so that's not just us. It's yeah. everywhere. Um, well, I, I can give you a little anecdotal information. My sister and her husband, they put their house in the market. They live in New Jersey. Put it on the market. Uh, day one, they had an offer for above asking price. Um, that turned out they didn't take that offer because it had a contingency on it. The next day, they had two offers. One was full price and one was above price. And they went back to the one that offered full price and said, would you adjust theirs? And they got more than asking price for their house ended up with. That's good. In, in well, four, that's... They sold it in four days. Yeah. Well, so, there's a demand much more than there is inventory. Yeah. All right. So we're more going out. Uh, stuff. It's Paul McCartney Day. We are going out with, what is this? 1985 by Paul McCartney and Wings. We'll be back on the Dakota Housing Network. Right now, 55. Here's Sean Hannity. Weekday afternoons on Super Talk 1270. All right. Dave Floor back on the Dakota Housing Network with Greg Larson and Jim Walsh playing a little Paul McCartney today because he's on tour and he's coming nearby Sioux Falls and Minneapolis in their near future. A little Junior's Farm. All right. Tax Day, it's coming up. Tax Day is coming. Normally, it would be Friday. But because it's Emancipation Day, the IRS yes. is emancipating everybody and giving us till Monday to complete yep. our taxes or get them in. So in light of that, 
Greg, the federal tax code and accompanying federal tax regulations contain how many words? Ten million. You are correct, sir. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. No. Uh, I get to pay my taxes on time. Yes, you do. A public, no, this publication, <laughs> Yep. if you if you went out and bought the book on Amazon, I, I don't know if it would fit on your Kindle. I don't know that I have a truck heavy enough to you know, yeah, to carry it. I'm not sure it would fit on the Trindle, but uh, Kindle. Uh, a publication would take an individual reading 300 words a minute. That's the average adult reading speed, by the way. More than 23 days of nonstop reading to digest. That's a it's like almost a month, right? That that's a work week, uh, a yeah, full yeah. month of work that you would normally do in a in a in a month to read that. So there's your task for May. Okay. If you could get back to us on that mm-hmm. in June, write a report or something. Okay. Can I lie and say? I Absolutely. Lie? Absolutely. You lie through your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Because we wouldn't have believed you anyway <laughs> if you, you would have said you read it, you wrote it. Well, so, so Emancipation right. Day, are you serious? That's Yeah, what is that anyway, by the way? Uh, I, I don't know. It's, I it's, don't a, know. it's some federal Somebody thing. got emancipated. Yeah, well, yeah. I thought that was you know back in the Civil War, right? Yeah. Well, it could be this. In this day, April 14, 1775, the first abolition society is formed. Well, maybe that's what it is. Now, get this – Get this label. It's the Society of Free Negroes Unlawfully Held in Bondage of Pennsylvania Society. Okay. All right. I I, I didn't <laughs> know that. And I, I don't know if that's what this Emancipation Day is, but that's what the I IRS know, said. Yeah. It's Emancipation Day, Someone so they're giving Google us till it. Monday. Yeah. Well, we'll Google it at the break. All right. And we'll find out. Okay. All right. Um, what else you got? We were talking about pending home sales. So what, what kind of right. – what do we got to tie in? What, 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 anything else with that or – uh, What's next? Yeah, let's talk about we we talk about the housing affordability index. Oh yeah, we've talked, we've about, talked about, that about that before. That's okay. always fun. Okay, uh, we're looking at that, and um, in every case, they have dipped from a year ago, um, but not so terrible. The Midwest still leads it. Uh, the Northeast has uh, has come back a lot. Uh, the the West is still the the weakest. So, so how do they figure this out again? Well, this is the they they take the uh, median priced home, yep, and the average mortgage rate. Now, the mortgage rate that they publish is always higher than the mortgage rate that we talk about because we're talking about the best mortgage rate. Yeah, and many people have their mortgage rates adjusted due to credit report, due to right. yep. product they use, yeah. all of that. So, so this so, is kind of this is just the average. Yep, so you could do better, higher. right? Uh, or worse. Right. And then they take the monthly principal and interest payment for that average house. The payment is a percentage of income for your home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the median family income and the qualifying income. So uh, the qualifying income is how much money you have to have to qualify for this loan. And based on that, they put out an affordability okay. index based right. on average salary, average cost of home, all of that. Okay. Then so about, how, about five things they throw right. in there. So we know how affordable the house is. Okay. So on the Northeast. And the, the baseline number is 100, right? Baseline number is That's 100. That. If you're below 100, you're in real trouble. The higher okay. above 100, the better. All right. Okay. All right. So the Northeast a year ago was 173.4. Okay. And that has, that's the one that has improved. That's 177.4 now. Okay. So the Northeast would be, we'd be talking Massachusetts, yep. New York, Maine, Massachusetts, New York. Pennsylvania. Okay. The, that, the Midwest is where we sit. And uh, uh, so I'll give you those numbers. The median price is 163.5. Now that's higher than it is in North Dakota, but that's the median price. And this is a strip, Minnesota, a kind of. The first states west of the Mississippi, yeah. north to south. Yeah, right. Okay. Plus Ohio, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, those guys, uh, our mortgage average mortgage rate is 4.13. That makes it a $634 payment just for principal and interest. That's a 11.2% of the income, which is a median income of 68114 So you need to have 30000 Four hundred thirty-two dollars to qualify for this loan, so our affordability index is two hundred twenty-three point eight. Okay, by far the highest by a bunch, and that's oh, yeah. up from uh, two nineteen um, last month, but down from two thirty-eight last year. Okay, so the big daddy is the West. That's the 
San Francisco, the left coast. California. Yep. Yeah. 311500 is your average, is your median home price. Okay. That means yeah. there's as many less than that as there are above that. And if you stripped out San Francisco, that number would probably go Angeles. down it probably by, would, by yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, their interest rate, mortgage rate, is four uh, percent, and uh, that's eleven ninety. Is their monthly payment on that nineteen point seven percent? They need as a percentage of income. Their average income is seventy two four fifty seven. Then is the uh, qualifying income, which means their affordability index rate is one twenty six point eight. Yeah, up a little from. A month ago, down from 133.7 a year ago. Yeah. So we're talking you know, big ranges we are. Of, of area. Yeah. And if you went to a place like San Francisco, that number is probably below 100. Yeah. I would guess. I would guess, yeah. yeah. Or Los Angeles. Yep. But overall, we've seen a, a slight increase in uh, uh, the Northeast, but other than that, we're off just a tick for the first quarter. So now it, it, let's try and extrapolate that down to Bismarck Mandan. Uh, our median home price, do you, we have an idea what that is? I do. Hey, right, there we go. Man with the answers. Our Greg median Larson. home price is two, uh, 257 okay. zero nine one. 257. As opposed so to. So that's a little closer to the northeast area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the average price that has sold, well, let's go with that one because that's closer. That's 250 148 Okay. That's off 4% uh, in price from this time a year ago, quarter to quarter. Okay. Average days in the market is about the same. Um, numbers of units sold is up 14%. Okay. In Bismarck, those numbers are much better. Okay. But so median income in North Dakota, I think, is in the 50, around 50? Yeah, I think it's like 53. Yeah, and I wonder if Bismarck Mandan would be higher than that. Could be, could be. If we yeah. guess. And so Bismarck Mandan, when you look at what, uh, based on median house price, interest rates, you know, obviously are index. good. Probably not as good as the Midwest at that 223. No, but we're right up there. Probably in that one. Well over 200. You think so? Yeah. Still? Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Still a healthy market in Bismarck Mandan uh, statewide. I've got some of those statistics we can look at in a bit. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll go with the flow here. Let's just, talk just one interesting we'll thing. Okay. Here. We got you know, an interesting fact. Way back in the day in the 2006s, they said the housing market is so strong it'll never fail. This is a new segment, or well, this is a segment. I mean, we have to give your your right. your things a name here. I think this is I'm just trying to fun facts. Some meaningless trivia here. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> meaningless? No, well, it's not meaningless. No, I mean you're, you're, you have you have historical information here, so I, I do. think we should say this is more like meaningless, useful information. Okay, with Greg Larson. Has okay. generally not much to do with real estate kind of long. trivia. Yeah. Well, April fourteenth in nineteen twelve. Okay. The t- the Titanic, the unsinkable Titanic, hit an iceberg. That was today. That was today. Wow. At just before midnight. That ice just hadn't cleared off yet. No, and no. it went. It was underwater in less than three hours. Yeah. Yeah. This unsinkable boat. Yeah, because the movie only lasted three hours. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it was under in three hours. Yeah, so uh, the movie took as long as the event took. Yeah, yeah. It to did. You, Isn't that something? Uh, they made a movie about it that yeah. lasted probably longer than it took the ship to sink. Yeah. Yeah. We went to that movie, this, just a quick piece, and we were standing in line, and there's a young couple in front of us, uh, actually two young couples, and we're talking as you are waiting to get your ticket. And uh, I said to my friends, uh, I understand that the sinking scenes are really realistic, really mm. impressive. And one of the young folks standing in front of us turned around and said, well, thanks a lot. We haven't seen it yet. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's always stories like that, yeah. yeah. That's okay. All right. Gee, I wonder if it'll sink. Yeah. It's supposed to be a really good movie. What's it about? Yeah. <laughs> the Titanic. Okay. There you go. The <laughs> All Titanic. right. Well, Tax day. Okay, let's let's talk about homeowners. We'll get back to real estate here. How's All right, that? let's okay. do that. Okay, f- tax day is coming up. Uh, four tax deductions to maxim- maximize your IRS refund for homeowners. Number one, residential energy credits. Right. They're still out there. 
If you uh, built a house last year uh, you and you had. put in qualifier, qualifying solar heating properties, such as um, ground source heat pumps, that yep. sort of thing, that would all qualify for a tax deduction. Uh, fuel cells, small wind energy. So I guess if you put up a wind turbine in your backyard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but geothermal heat pump, very popular with new construction, I think. Um, so that remember to do that if you did that. Mortgage interest, mortgage insurance premiums, and deductible points. Remember to do that. You're going to get a statement from your lender. Moving expenses. Yep. If you moved somewhere and you've got moving expenses, you can deduct those. Uh, there are some fine print uh, things here I'm not going to read, but you know, <laughs> make sure you the read the fine print. Yep. Uh, in business use of your home. Uh, right. You know, certainly a realtor, yep. you could be doing that in your home. So remember those tax deductions. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going out on Rock Show. That's what we got here on the Port Housing Network. Right now, 55. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. And now for the big question. Hey, Paul, tell us, who's your favorite Beatle in the whole wide world? All right, Jim Walsh, Mr. Funny Man. He's wrong, though. I don't, probably not. <laughs> yeah. We are back at the Dakota Housing Network. Dave Floor with Greg Larson and our resident comedian, Jim Walsh. Here we go. Thank you. Right. Be here all week. Yeah, all right. That's right. You are okay, here all week. Uh, Greg, you have a shameless plug. I have a shameless plug. If you okay. guys are looking for something to do starting tonight at 7 through Saturday night at 7 and again at 2 p.m. on Sunday, okay, you can go to the Shiloh Christian School presentation of Bye Bye Birdie. All right. Ooh. Let's be there. Yep. All right. It's, so uh, your, your grandson, Alex. My grandson, Alex, is yeah. in it, and uh, it's a very good cast. They do a nice job there. Okay. And uh, so... Yeah, if so you have time, you should go and see that. It's well so worth I, it. It's glad to see you pay attention to your daughter when she asks you it's well, true. a favor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm reading it right off of my uh, text saying yes. you should do this, and so I did. Yeah. And her name is Jennifer? Her name is Becky. Becky. She's Becky. the grade school art teacher oh. at Shiloh. Oh, okay. All well, right. Becky, I hope I hope your dad did you well yeah. here and gave you the shameless plug you were looking for. And I will okay. probably be there all four nights because okay. our grandson graduates this uh, spring. He's a smart young guy, isn't he? He is. You, I've he's seen some a, stuff some he's done. He's done stuff. some super super kid, it sounds like. Yep. Yep. Should be proud of him. I'll brag on him all day if you all right. want. I mean, okay. we don't have to talk about anything but him from here on out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, that's going to be our next segment. All right. That's it. The Alex segment. All right. <laughs> we'll do the Alex segment. Well, while we're well, doing Greg, non-real estate stuff, okay. we should- More we meaningless, should, uh, useful uh, non-real estate yep. facts with Greg Larson. We should know that this is the day that Abraham Lincoln was shot. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Big day. Not By a, the way, big uh, piece of day. trivia. Did you know that Lincoln was Jewish? He was shot in not. the temple. Oh, oh. <laughs> but Jim, the boom. comedian Jim today. Uh, aside from that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Yeah, okay. yeah, right. Mr. Comedian today, Jim. I don't know about you. And Loretta Lynn was born today. All right. Well, there's some country. Well, there she's you know. proud to she's, be a coal miner's daughter. She has a new right. album coming out. She does. And she does. She yeah. is like 80 years old, I believe. She's right up there, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Married at 14, did you know? Yeah, that? Yes. Mother is 16. That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's been around for, well, basically forever for all of us here. Yep. Really, yeah. Notable other things. I love that song she did, The Pill. The Pill. She Don't did a song one. called The Pill about her boyfriend was slipping around on her, and she says, well, I'm going to get revenge now because I got the pill. That's an actual song by Loretta Lynn. Oh, oh darn. okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. I remember she all was right. talking about redecorating the house to make it look like a honky-tonk. So her husband didn't oh, have yeah. to go anywhere. Go anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> She's a smart lady. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, okay. What else? We got some more North Dakota this is real estate activity. This is real estate statistics. Yep. Okay. Um, let me see. And I'm just going to run these through by individual city here just to give you a flavor. All righty. Of where things are a little soft. Uh, the Badlands Board of Realtors, Dickinson, First quarter of 2016, they sold 45 homes. In 15, it was 58 homes. And so they're off 
22% in numbers of units sold, which isn't a surprise. Bismarck Mandan, we're up 20%. Uh, Fargo-Moorhead is off 6.5%. Grand Forks is up 8%. Jamestown is up 22%. Minot is down 33%. Wahpeton is up 83%. And Williston is off 13%. So the overall is we are off 5.7% in numbers of units sold, uh, but we're still healthy. The average sales price is basically the same. So that hasn't changed. The median sale price uh, is a little bit different from the average, and that's always lower because mm -hmm. that's the right in the middle. Yep. Uh, statewide, that number is 2085. Uh, down from 2099, so it's off just 7%. Um, so the, both of those are, are uh, about the same. So that's a very good, stable real estate market overall for the state, as you might expect. It's softer in the oil mm -hmm. producing areas, but it's not dead. It, no, They're still no. selling homes. Um, yeah, and I can attest to that. You know, with our uh, first time home buyer program and, and whatnot, we've seen an increase uh, from the previous, say, five years in, say, Stark County mm -hmm. and Williams County, primarily because home prices have come down some. Right. And more people have put their homes on the market up there or, you know, maybe for sale by owners, and homes are coming on the market at reasonable prices right. that people can afford. So we've seen that uptick, which is a good thing, I think, that... Yeah, and I think that will happen. You've got some people moving up there. Uh, moving around within the community. Yeah, and rental yeah. units. Uh, they did a study. Well, it was at your uh, annual I was meetings. Excited, yeah. They did a study about uh, rental and the, the workforce and stuff, and, and uh, that was a pretty, actually pretty positive report about what's mm -hmm. happening there. Yeah. Well, and that was the folks from NDSU, Nancy Hoder, yeah, and yeah. I can't remember the other gentleman's name. Um, but they also came out with something else that they've been reporting on, too, about they did a survey of the workers, yeah, um, the oil workers, and you know whether you would stay here permanently or not. And it was a really low number, like below twenty percent, that would say, "Yeah, I'll, I'd like to move here and stay here." Yeah, you know, because the, the rest of them were just like, "No, I'm here to work. I got a home yeah. somewhere was, else." Yeah, they split that, as I recall, in uh, production workers. Yeah. And okay. exploration workers okay, yeah. and development workers. Yeah. And it was like 19% of the development workers would say they'd stay. Yeah. Okay. But that makes sense because they follow the oil play. That's yeah. why they're called wildcatters. Yeah. You know, yeah. they chase the oil play. Yeah. So they have one base home and then they travel to wherever that's happening. Yeah. The other folks are the production side. They're the ones where they bring the oil out of the ground and, and yeah. do all of it's that. It's a long term. Job. Those guys are much more stable, and I think yeah. that was almost seventy percent said yeah. they would live here. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, you know you're the wildcatter. I would assume you you've got a base for your home, and it's yep. like, oh, I'm going to go where they're going to pay me the most money. Yeah, or I'm working for whoever it is, Halliburton or Hess yeah. or whatever, and it's like, well, I'm going to North Dakota because I'm going to get paid more there. Or I'm going to go to Texas because I get paid there, or yep. I'm going to Texas because I don't like the weather here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a uh, my my. Uh, daughter and her family live uh, outside of Denver in a, uh, uh, Firestone, Colorado. Okay. And in their development community, there are several wildcatters. The kids live oh. there. The wife lives there. Yeah. Kids are going to school and the husbands go everywhere. Yeah. You know, several of them are in North Dakota right now. A couple were still in Alaska doing some yeah. stuff there. And the, uh, one of them is, is uh, works in Saudi Arabia. He's a geological mm. engineer, and he's in Saudi okay. Arabia for four months and then off for four months. Okay, so. yeah. yeah. So anyway, it, uh, things have changed in western North Dakota, but still doing okay, Yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah. It, you know, and certainly some people have been impacted by it, no, no question. I think, but you know, overall, we're way ahead of where we were. Well, in yeah, the housing market, you know, even though it's off these numbers and they look like terrible numbers, twenty-two percent and yeah. and thirteen uh, percent. You need to remember that that's off um, from last year, but they're still up about five hundred percent from they were in two thousand five. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah so they're off 22% from absolutely yeah. ridiculous peak. So yeah. I, I, you hear realtors saying it's it's slower and it's, no. it's the market's a little tougher for them right now. You don't hear anybody saying it's terrible and yeah. what are we going to yeah. do? I'm going to have to go back and wash dishes because yeah. I can't make a living in real yeah, estate. Yeah, and it's you're, you're going 100 miles an hour, now you're going 75. 70. Yeah. Right. You're going exactly. to speed limit now. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. That's where it hits. Yeah. Yep. So that's that's okay. Did you know, uh, according to J.P. Morgan Chase, CEO Jamie Dimon, J.P. Morgan Chase is probably one of the top largest four banks in the world. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make him smart. De- he declared recently that mortgages are bad for business. Well. <laughs> uh, he In a letter to his shareholders... Is a yearly letter to shareholders. He openly questioned why the bank is still in the mortgage business, telling shareholders that one of the main reasons is simply for their customers, for the benefit of their customers, despite the vol- volatile nature of the business and the increasingly lower returns coming from mortgages. Um, why are you still in the mortgage business is a very valid one. Um, you know, there he reports a uh, Chase is seeing lower returns as new regulations add both sizable costs and higher capital requirements. Uh, they're basically doing it because they have customers, um, and you know you can't. You're a bank like that. You can't get out totally out of that business because it's so important for your bank customers. Obviously, now what I also found is interesting was they recently uh, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors did a little test of the. Uh, it was required by the Frank Dodd Act. Uh, on the living wills of the five uh, large nation's largest banks, um, and f- uh, five of the nation's largest banks failed these living will tests, and one of them was J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, and a living will test is a stipulation of the Frank Dodd Act it requires banks to provide plans on how they would fail in an orderly way. <laughs> <laughs> in a crisis without requiring money from the public. So anyway, Jamie, apparently mortgages are causing Morgan, J.P. Morgan Chase to fail the living will test, which is okay. Good, so, yeah. Okay, this is not Paul McCartney. This is Loretta. It's The Pill by Loretta Lynn. We'll be back on the Dakota Housing Network. But all I've seen of this old world is a bed and a doctor bill. I'm tearing down your brooder house. Cause now I've got the pill. Right now, 57. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. Okay, we are coming up in our last segment here. Oh, on Dakota Housing Network. Dave Floor and Greg Larson. I'm just trying to keep up with you, Jim. I'm just trying to keep up with you. Jumping, um, Jim Walsh. Okay. You know, we've been saving money. We have been. During calendar year 2015, the nationwide average price of gasoline fell from 2.26 a gallon to two dollars a gallon. So cheaper gasoline. More, your oil country needs you. Yes, cheaper gasoline saved American families 126 billion in 2015, an average of a thousand and eighty-four dollars per household. Wow, makes me want to drive my car more. Yeah, but then I'd be paying more for gas still. Get a Prius. Okay, all right. Drive more. Yeah, but then you're not saving as much money on gas. No, and neither of us could fit in a Prius. They actually they're pretty roomy. Are they? I've never been in. They're there. not. They're not bad. They're pretty good. Wow. And you know what, Greg? I think we're in the wrong business. Why is that? Well, I I I'm, I love baseball. It's baseball season, okay. right? I love. It's baseball. also hockey I, season. Yeah. Well, it's playoff. It's playoff in NBA. Yeah. NHL baseball season's cranking up. No, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a major league baseball player. Uh, you know, Harmon Killebrew, Tony Oliva, Rod Crew, the Twins. Those are my guys, right? Mm. I really wish I would have followed through on that, <laughs> but I needed some actual physical talent There's to a talent do so. Thing. Yeah, because the average salary, okay, Major League Baseball started up on Sunday, the uh, April third. The average salary of all Major League ball players on opening day rosters and disabled lists, four point four million dollars. Wow, that's the average. The average. And the guy that's right on that average is pitcher Pedro Strope. Of the Chicago Cubs, he will make four point four million this season. I have no idea who that is. Never heard of him. Never heard of him, but he's making four point four million. Good for him. I hope he's a good player. Yep. So, what are the prognostications right. about Carson Wentz? Salary. Well, well, I don't know. If you go number two in the draft, he, if Cleveland picks him number two, they have a they have a rookie salary thing in the yep. NFL now. Um, 
But I, I think Carson will pretty much, you know, you would think he would be taken care of for the rest of his life. I would think by so. By what he will sign a contract for. Yeah. Uh, as long as you don't blow it like a guy named Johnny Manziel. Well, I don't think Who was also drafted by the Cleveland Browns. I don't, I don't think Mr. Wentz. I don't Wentz, think they're of the same character. I think Mr. Wentz is a totally different person than Johnny <laughs> Manziel, and we probably don't have to worry about him doing anything yeah. that Mr. Manziel has done. So. so there are rumors that he's going to be in Bismarck at Century High School on draft day. I just saw that this morning yeah, that, that be ESPN fun. will be here. Oh, really? At Century High School. Because Carson will be there. That is where he graduated from. Yeah. And, of course, he's the number two pick. More than likely, or he will certainly go in the to, in the round one. Top ten, they figured. Top ten at least. Um, so yeah, he's going back to his home school. And so Carson, buy a house in Bismarck. I know a realtor who'd be happy to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> we. I don't think we need to say who. No, no, that would be you know something. And of course, you know, real estate is in his blood, right? His family. Yeah. And by the yeah. way, just as long as we're not jumping right back into real estate, I need to congratulate the University of North Dakota fighting. Oh, there we go. Well, I'll say Sue. Okay. Hawks. Uh, Hawks. Sue, Sue Hawks. Uh, for their eighth national championship. Yep. Uh, I have a slight family tie to one of those championship teams, so I'm pretty proud of that. Okay. What is it? Uh, my son-in-law played briefly for the oh, Sioux. Oh, Okay. Cool. And I mean briefly. Briefly. You got in some games, though. <laughs> you got on, put on some skates and got beat up. So Okay. Yep. All right. Well, that's good. That's what hockey is. Yep. But on this day in 1960, Montreal Canadiens won their fifth Stanley Cup in a row. Ooh, they were good. That's was good Rocket question. Richard still playing that yes. year? 60? Oh, yeah, yep. I'm sure. What an amazing player he was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a feat no other team has ever done. Yeah. Five in a row. Yeah. So it's, it's and Gump the, Worsley, the goaltender. Bison and the Canadiens. Ha- real Hall of Famer. Yeah. Remember him? The, who's that? Gump Worsley. Oh, Gump Worsley. Gump Worsley. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jean Beliveau, another one, Hall of yeah. Famer, very uh, mild-mannered yeah. fellow. Yeah. Well, I'm a, a Gump UND. Gump Worsley was uh, one of the early Americans in the NHL. He was from Chicago. Oh, okay. Originally. I didn't know that. And he played on the, in Ottawa or in he, Montreal yeah. and Toronto. Mostly. Infiltrated the Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. And was Last, later traded to Minnesota. Yep. Vowed yeah. to put the North Stars in the uh, playoffs that year, and he did. Yeah. yeah. Last no, he was, goalie to wear a mask. That's what I was going to say. Without a mask. <laughs> yeah, last to not one wear to put on a mask. The, yeah, so Wasn't Jacques Plante yeah. the first one to put on a mask? So. Okay. I believe mm-hmm. so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I'm a UND alumni, so I'm with you on the Fighting Sioux. All right, um, there you go. The, uh, you know what? I, I first, first championship since 2000. Now, they've been there since 2000. It was it eight times in the Final Four? Yeah. They finally won one. I feel they, kind of bad for... They made for, the national tournament every year. Been in the final four, eight. Yeah. I, I feel kind of bad for Dave Haxtell. Yeah. He was coach, <laughs> and he got there so many times, and they just couldn't get over the hump and win that. And Bradbury comes in, first year, first time ever done as a first-year coach, wins the national yep. championship. Yep. Yeah. Well, Haxtell... He uh, made the playoffs with the Flyers this year, though. Yes, he did. They're in the yeah. winningest record in college hockey. Yeah, but he never won the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Ironic. Ironic. Okay. Um, okay, let's... Well, Greg, let's talk about this. Uh, I kind of want to talk about that guy back at uh, uh, Morgan Stanley. Oh, Jamie Dimon? Jamie Dimon. J.P. Morgan Chase? What about J.P. Morgan Chase. Well, yeah. you know, he says that mortgage is a bad business. Yep. Uh I want to. I just want to call the baloney pill there. Okay. You know, he's maybe not making as much money as he'd like to make on mortgages because the interest is low. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, maybe for his investors, it's not good business. But I can't think of another business that stabilizes our economy. Yeah. And gives individuals a better opportunity to build uh, equity and mm-hmm. build uh, an estate. Yeah. Than mortgages make possible. Yeah. So it's a little bit selfish on his part. I'm saying, okay, you don't like mortgages. How about you put out a bunch more high interest credit cards? Maybe that'll make you happy. Yeah, you know, kind of a parasitic it, attitude, in my opinion. Yeah, he's looking at it from the standpoint. I think you brought up that <laughs> you, you know, I was making, we were making this much on loans back in the day, and now because of circumstances, low interest rates, regulation, we're only making this much. Yeah, and it's a little volatile. Yeah, you know, and and they've dealt with getting fined by the CFPB and HUD and stuff, and they've paid out some pretty big settlements. 
So I'm sure he's feeling a little wounded. Sure. A little bruised. And he's saying, well, the only reason we're doing it is because of our customers. Yeah. Uh, well, no, you're still making money at it, yeah, I bet. I bet. Just not as much as you used to. That's right. Yeah. Um, it, 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 isn't, it isn't that it, is, it does not remain one of his most stable income sources. Yeah. And it, and you have to look at it, too, uh, for a company like that, that, that that's that large. That, that is that is a product you have to. You, you have to really be offering it right. for your customers because there's so much. Uh, you're getting other business because you – Sure. Th- that's part of your mix of products, and you're not you, – you can't get rid of it. So, I yeah. mean, yeah, it's probably eh. – Yeah, I just you know. didn't want to leave that one alone yeah. just yet. It's, you know, he's not, he's not the, the guy that's sitting in uh, you know, a little rural town in North Dakota – in the bank that, well, I'm not going to do mortgages because I can't, I really can't afford to do it because right. of regulation. But I, you know, I'm providing my deposit, but I'm going to have some kind of relationship where I can take my customers and say, hey, go over here and they'll yeah. and do in, a loan in for North you. In North Dakota, the beauty is that uh, the state bank of North Dakota will do, we'll that. do yeah. that for these yeah. small town banks who can't yeah. afford the staff yeah. and the folks to do that. Mortgages. Yeah. And there, there's a, you know, there's mortgage brokers, there's options sure. for banks to go to and, um, you know, those are the guys that really can't afford to do mortgages because yeah. of regulation. Yeah. J.P. Morgan Chase can afford to do it. I'm, I agree with you. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, um, I feel better now. All right, good. We all agree. <laughs> Jim says we have two minutes, or he's just holding up two fingers. I don't know what yeah. it is. Okay, two. You're just holding up two fingers for fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, Greg, there was a, a little thing came out here uh, this week from HUD oh, uh, yeah, yeah. to like the- landlords. Uh, rent of ex-convicts okay. is the headline. A little, you know, okay. HUD requires, if if you're in a, if you have a apartment building and you're, you're getting rental subsidy through that, through a HUD program, which, you know, there's several of those across the state of North Dakota, you were supposed to do background checks on yep. people. So you make sure that you're not letting somebody in that could be violent, sure. et cetera. Well, now they're saying, you know, the Fair, HUD says the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination in the sale, rental, or financing of dwellings and other housing-related activities on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, disability, familial status, or national origin. I don't see anything in here about— He wants to throw in criminal record? Criminal record, apparently, <laughs> yeah. Now, in defense of this, I would say that, you know, when, when a, a, a person gets out of prison, they should have a chance. Yep, yeah. And you have to be reasonable. Are they violent or not? Yeah. And, and so we can visit this topic. Maybe we'll get a rental guy on here the show, and we can revisit this and see what's the real impact of this. So Good point. All right. Okay, next week is uh, – no, we're not here. No, we aren't. Who's here? Brian. Brian. Brian, here. Brian will be here next week. Brian Ritter, uh, we have gone to Code Housing. We're talking about all things Bismarck Mandan. Yeah, yeah. I'm on actual vacation. And Greg is on vacation. I'm working. Yeah. Darn it. Okay. All right. We'll be back on the Code Housing Network. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Greg. Bye, folks. Yeah.